News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Brought to you by the Pee Wee Herman Lookalike World Championships. Contestants will be judged on costume and appearance, as well as their ability to display those unique Pee Wee Herman mannerisms that children find so funny and that gave the rest of us nightmares. You'll never forget what you see at the Pee Wee Herman Lookalike World Championships. And the news gets worse, Alan. Max says he's going to enter this year. The guy's been driving me nuts all week. But Hey, what can I say? He really shaped my um, uh, formative years. Anyway, welcome to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Oh, and I'm Alan Gilbert of the Dark Oak <laughs> Press and Media. You wow. sure about that? And that's our buddy Max behind the glass. Boy, everybody's thrown off with this snow. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And, of course, we invite you to go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and check out all the action over there, uh, including the fact I've already posted the must-have item of the week, Alan. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not letting this, this blizzard... Uh, hold me back, man. We're getting things done. No, Joe, everyone's blown off today because of the fact I'm wearing the Pee Wee Herman suit in studio. Okay, we're moving along from Pee Wee Herman. Okay, man. <laughs> we got other gags to pull here. So, well, Alan, apparently... <laughs> Speaking it's going to be one of those days. It's just going to be that day, Joe. Hey, Alan, apparently uh, our cinder block discussion last week, tri- uh, it didn't trigger a few people. It had some uh, reactions, so we may we may follow well, up I'm on gonna that Well, I'm going to say triggered. We, uh, we, we apparently hit a uh, cinder block issue and or nerve. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little mm-hmm. follow up report on that. Also, Alan, drainage drama. Oh my gosh. This is what I've got. Drainage drama. Please be a good neighbor. Mm. <laughs> and I think oh. I just triggered a, a a lot of listeners with that one. Uh, funnily enough, Alan, the job that I'm dealing with uh, with the uh, cinder block wall also has drainage issues. Imagine that. I can't. I can't fathom how that would happen. And it, it inspired me to, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of good material out of this job. It's like, I, I really need to thank her. <laughs> it, but, it's uh, the gift that keeps giving. Yeah, so we're going to uh, talk about that uh, and the drainage challenges that sometimes are presented mm. when some when your neighbor does something. Uh, <laughs> I've and we seen all know the, how that works. So. One of the best ones I saw was a company do it to themselves accidentally. It, it can happen. Oh, drainage yeah. is a big deal. So uh, Critter Wars, apparently we've got mm. a spider invasion on the way that uh, Alan's <laughs> going to th- discuss. Uh, and then, then uh, uh, Max is going to want to tune in for this one, the Demon Stone in Japan. Mm-hmm. Apparently there's news about that. Oh, yeah. Is this it, the Japanese Infinity Stone? It, I don't know, man. It, well, okay. It's close. It's it close. Sounds like it's close. So, uh, you know, so there's a lot of action today, and there's a few other surprises we're not going to tell you about. You'll just have to stay tuned. So it's all coming at you today on Tool Talk Radio. But before we get to any of that... And now, Tool Talk Radio's weekly salute. Sometimes when something is compressed, interesting results can occur. (laughs) During an NFL football season, hundreds of games are played. However, deciding the championship is compressed down to one game at the end of the season in a game that we're not allowed to give the name of right Mm, now. We don't want to get sued. Mm -mm. When a humble caterpillar is compressed into a cocoon... It eventually emerges as a beautiful butterfly. Max, the producer, felt as if his spine had been compressed after his last martial arts class, where they spent three hours learning the finer techniques of how to land after getting thrown through a plate glass window. I don't know why he does that to himself. I call that Mado Ukemi, which is a word for um, uh, window Ukemi. Okay, there you go. (laughs) Mado Ukemi. Okay. And, of course, on one noteworthy occasion, when Alan Gilbreth was attempting to secure a business loan Mm. in order to open his dream restaurant, Che Ventre Cure Giao, or as translated in English, (laughs) The House of the Brave Belly, He presented the bank manager with architectural drawings of the proposed business. However, after looking at the drawings, the loan officer observed that some of the features may prove cost-prohibitive. Effect- uh, Most notably, the 50,000-square-foot attached museum showcasing Allen's culinary adventures and displays of memorabilia, including his collection of over 10,000 spatulas. <laughs> well, you know. However, the final nail in the fiscal coffin came when Alan produced a Tupperware container holding a sample offering of one of the restaurant's signature surf and turf dishes, Jus de Pomme Anguel Compresse Estomac de Chameau, or as it reads on the English side of the menu, Compressed Eel 
layered with aged Limburger cheese and baked inside of an apple juice marinated camel stomach. <laughs> Shockingly, Alan did not get the loan. I don't know. Some people just have no vision, Alan. I mean, uh, uh, hats off for trying. <laughs> yes, compression can be an animating force. And interestingly enough, the human body also has the ability to compress many mm. things, including air, especially after you eat at Alan's house. <laughs> Over the millennia, many devices and machines have been developed to help us move air. In the year 1650, however, a German inventor developed a new machine designed to harness the power of compressed air a device that, we, that you will still find in workshops all over the world today. My friends, we give you the air compressor. <laughs> Holy smokes. I didn't think I'd get all those French words out, Alan. But uh, if, only, if only we could compress the salute into the time of the music. <laughs> uh, ain't going to happen, Max. But, Alan, the uh, air compressor, I, uh, you know, it's, mm. it's one of those interesting ones because technically I suppose you could, you could take it back to the human lung, right? I mean, our lungs... We can blow air. We can because that's what they did in the old days to blow to start to stoke the fire. You blow on the fire, and then well, of course, uh, of course, we know what happened about. Uh, let's go back to the original purse. Okay. The original purse was usually an animal's bladder, right? That you had put a piece of reed in and had inflated, mm -hmm. let it dry, put some leather straps on it, and dun dun dun. Yeah. Uh, that, that was, sounds kind of, people kind of go, really? Seriously? Well, you know. Ladders were pretty handy. There's a reason know. a football was called a pigskin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Well. Uh, it, the real, we don't really get into compressed air until we get about 1,500 years ago or so. Yeah. And we wound up with what we would recognize today as bellows well you know th that's what's interesting about the history it's it looks like it it goes back like there was a rudimentary uh bellows or something as far back as 3000 bc yeah. but we're gonna unpack it alan because a lot of this uh th the history of the uh, air compressor is actually pretty fascinating so but to give credit where credit's due before we step out of here in 1650 the german scientist otto von geek uh Gierich, i don't know i hope i pronounce it right he, he produced what's closest to what we have today. It's like a single piston cylinder. And so uh, hats off, Otto. It's always Otto Von something. You ever mm, notice uh, that? Yeah, but, smart uh, guys. We're going to unpack that because the history of the air compressor is pretty cool. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio coming to you from News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break. and We'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. You have paid the price for your lack of vision. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. You know, in fairness, Alan, I think one thing we can't be accused of is a lack of vision. I mean, oh, that's true. You mentioned lack of vision in the last segment. I got to throw this in. <laughs> okay. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our buddy Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989 or go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, give us a like and check out the action over there. And actually, you can send messages there because sometimes, Alan, they need to uh, send a message that it's got pictures or video oh, or something. Yes, Maybe you've got some pictures. nice pictures from that surprise snow we had mm. yesterday. Mm. Uh, the, I don't remember the weatherman alerting us to what three inches of snow in like an hour or something? Uh, I mean, it absolute came... whiteout conditions. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was amazing, pretty intense. So I mean, uh, but but uh, it, it last night and I looked out in my backyard. It looked like daytime out there. It was so bright. So anyway, I wonder what our buddy Larry Brown is doing today. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. you, you know what he's doing today. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, uh, I was out uh, working outside in a flannel shirt. Uh, then by the end of the day, I had a winter coat on, mm -hmm. and it was a uh, blizzard conditions. Or so, well, I don't yeah. want to get carried away, but no, 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 I will, I will freely tell you, having been caught in a blizzard up north, we had an uh, that we can honestly say we actually had a real thunder blizzard. It got it got really windy, then cold. So I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, well, so I mean, conceivably, people might have been using their AC yesterday, and then now they they've got their uh, heat AC on. to heat. One so day. Larry's, uh, I'm sure he's on he's on duty today. Oh my but, gosh, um, you know. If you do need any HVAC, if you have any HVAC needs, or especially if you want to clean the air in your home, uh, especially with pollen and just the general stuff that's in the air here in the mm -hmm. Mid-South, 
Uh, get in touch with the good people at Brown Refrigeration. They're top notch. They have a great culture. We love to celebrate yes. the culture at Brown Refrigeration. It goes down to every technician that's going to be out in the field. When they show up, you just feel like you're in good hands. Oh, and yes. if you have any issues uh, down the road, they're there. You, they're just a phone call away. Great people, and they have the uh, smart home systems as well. So you have an app for basically to control every feature in your HVAC system. It's it's really cool. And Larry Brown's just a really great man to work with. So give them a call at 901-362-1881 or go to brownref.com. Hey, Alan, so uh, we, were, we were talking about the air compressor, and it is interesting when you get into these um, inventions that there are more or less ancient. And uh, yes. But you, you touched on something because I think around 3000 B.C. was a pivotal moment because that's when people, I guess, started uh, in, in, in widespread, uh, you know, a lot of civilizations started melting metal. And uh, it, blowing on the fire with your lungs wasn't going to cut it. You had to get the fires really hot. Right. So. Well, you know, gold, not so hard to melt. Okay. Copper, that was where we really started the, I, I guess, the... Um, uh, beginning of the Copper Age and then the Bronze Age when they began discovering different metals. Yeah. But copper was kind of the big one because you really couldn't, you couldn't fan fast enough by hand. Yeah. You know, we've all picked up a little wavy fan and held it in front of us. You wave it pretty good. You can move some air. Right. But you just couldn't get enough going to really get that copper to smelt down. Okay, this is something, and I saved this. I didn't ask you this in our show prep last night because I wanted a hot take on this mm -hmm. out. This is a scientific question about this. So, okay, I know, you know, like with an air compressor, for a woodworker, it's really handy because you just, if you've got a bunch of dust on uh, on a piece of, you know, right. that you're working on, you blast it with that, it blows it off, it gets rid of all the dust. However, when you're using a um, compressed air to... Uh, Maybe to stoke a fire. Right. Okay. We're 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 blasting it with basically oxygen, right? So twenty two percent oxygen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is causing the big? Uh, I guess what I'm saying. It. Why do fires like that? Is it because you're spreading the flammable surfaces around, or is it because they're getting blasted with oxygen? That's uh, kind D, of, all of the above, actually. Yeah, explain right. it, because <clears throat> I've always been fascinated with okay, that. Okay, so, well, so. here you go. Let's talk about ignition. Ignition okay. takes three things. Of course, you must have your substrate, whatever it is that's going to burn. So and that's your piece of wood. So a piece or, of wood or coal, coal or yeah. charcoal or uh, feathers or whatever it is you're, you're trying to emoliate. Then you have to have an ignition source and oxygen. Okay. So you've got to have... Basically, think of it as rust on crack, because what you're basically doing is massive oxidation of any carbon-based material. Is it caused because of the quick movement or the oxygen? Well, it is because that what you're doing is you're creating a rapid release okay. of carbons to become CO2 and CO1. So you've got carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and the smoke and all the particulate begins to come off. So what you're looking at is the more oxygen you can get down, especially into the base of something, because heat is going to rise, the more fuel you're giving it, the deeper in your burn is going to take place and the faster the oxidation is going to happen. Okay. So as this, all three of these things begin to happen at once you get the rapid increase in temperature. Right. Now, this is where we also discovered really early on fire hardening and reburning stuff. Oh. Because a partially burnt log from yesterday is going to burn a lot hotter than the fresh log. Hmm. I guess that the, makes sense. Yeah. Well, the fresh log still had all the sugars in it and the sap and all that. Now, the half-burned log is our charcoaled up, is all black and knobby looking. Now, uh -huh. that char is where you really get into creating some heat. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Now, I didn't want to get sidetracked talking about fire and all that, cause, but I was just sort of well, curious about it, that. But uh, It's a big part of why we have the air compressor, because okay. now we could get something going hot enough that we can now also make ceramics. Yeah. Well, because you got to have a kiln. good hot, got to have a hot fire. Ceramics allowed us to make more and better types of metals. 
So this was a big deal. So, I mean, uh, I guess some of the old movies where you got the poor guys there strapped to the bellows, pumping up and down. Right. That had to be real because you don't really get into commercial air compressors until about 1880. Well, I'm sitting here looking at my checklist down because I printed this off and it's like, well, I so there's several things. That I, I guess the German uh, inventor, Otto von Gierig, right. uh, he had a, a piston right. with a cylinder. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is that must have been hand pumped, right? Like yes. I'm get, okay. But when you get to Victor Pop, Victor um, Pop is the, is the uh, Austrian engineer about 1880. And I just love the guy, you know, the guy's last name is Pop, so he goes into air compressors. Right. Uh, he actually started a company that built an air compressor, and because of the timing of when he opened up, pneumatics, hydraulics, yeah. and electricity all became more viable or more reliable at that time. Mm -hmm. So kind of welcome to a huge part of the Industrial Revolution. Well, because when I'm looking at it, there's different, everybody's got their own reasons. Like some of these inventors, they had them so they could, uh, it looks like even back in 1650, it was so you could pump air into mines. Or yes. no, and then uh, in 1799, there was a guy, George Mendhurst. He was in England. Yeah. He used a motorized air compressor, which I wonder what that is. Like, well, is steam it still him? Oh, steam powered. Yeah. Well, in 1799. Yes. That's cool. Well, so. the, the steampunk era actually begins about 1600. See, so I didn't know that. Had, I always think of that as the 1800s. No, so. no. You actually had like a belt drive where they could, uh, I think the first steam-powered engine was basically a windmill or a grist mill. Okay. So, yeah, I, makes so sense. So anything that had that turn to it, this is what enabled mines to go deeper and further because we were able to bellows stage after stage deeper and deeper into the mine and remove the bad gases and pump in oxygen-rich you know, surface air. So it, it it was, I guess you could say it was an air compressor, but it sounds like an air circulation system. But it was a series of bellows compressing and blowing the air deeper and deeper into the mine. And so it, in a way, yeah. it became kind of an early air conditioning system. And, and I guess technically, even a modern air compressor, you could say is air circulating because it's drawing air in, it's compressing it and blowing yes. it out, right? Because it wouldn't just it has to have air coming in as well. So, well, yeah, but. and you use this uh, even in today in modern gold diving. You just use a regular old air compressor and uh, just keep the volume down to where you're not exploding the poor person on the other end. Yeah. And they're just pumping regular surface air right and, on in. And today they're so portable. I mean, you can get one. They're loud. That's the only downside is they're, they're very loud, but they power right. a lot of tools. The cheap they're, ones they're, are loud. Yeah. Well, the really okay. expensive, nice ones with the really good manufacturing are actually a lot quieter than you think. That's good. And, you, you know, the ones you can throw in the back of your truck, but they are handy and uh, the, we, we love the air compressor. I've, I use it a lot in uh, woodwork. We do. It's great. It blasts out that uh, all that sawdust. But, uh Hats off to everybody who had a hand in giving us the uh, modern uh, air compressor. So, all right, Alan, we're going to take a quick break. And apparently the uh, cinder block discussion mm -hmm. needs to continue. So uh, we're going to do that. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. The likelihood of you dying violently within the next five minutes is 87.61%. You are about to get me killed. We will both die because of your negligence. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. I told you to turn off that alert system. People are going to get wise. <laughs> anyway, welcome to uh, Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from DarkOakMedia.com and our pal Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And, of course, we invite you to go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page. Give us a like. Check out all of our past episodes. Uh, well, they're linked. You know, there's a lot of ways to check out our past episodes. There are indeed. Alan's platform is YouTube. We have we have the platform battles going on here on the show. I'm a Spotify man. Uh, listen however you want. I don't care. It's your, you know, here's the great your thing. Dime. You can take us with you. Yeah. But either way, I would say this, Alan. This is something we can agree on. 
Uh, if you do listen to Tool Talk Radio on one of those platforms, you know, after the fact, give us a nice five-star mm -hmm. review and yes. say nice things about us because the algorithms will, uh, it'll help us out. They, and, they will uh, love you and us. And if you subscribe, that way you get an alert every time Alan posts one of the new mm -hmm. episodes. So so we can agree on that, Alan. Absolutely. Okay. You know what else we can agree on? And I know this because you and I have both done business with this gentleman. Big M Roofing and Remodeling. Our buddy Jay Hill uh, I wonder what his day's like today. Every day, I bet he had plans. I bet they were going to be putting roofs on today. I wonder Mine. if they're still going to be happening. So, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, everybody's. If if you're not in the mid south, maybe you don't realize we got we got hit with a flash snow a snowstorm we last got night. Pounded. It was yes. weird. It just I you know it looks nice and it was you know interesting. It looks and a lot I'm, like Narnia out here right now. So. I'm sure it'll be gone in a day or so, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, that I wonder if that disrupted Jay's uh, schedule. But uh, either way, if you've got any roofing issues, and especially if you've got some damage, and it's possible that that damage may be covered by your homeowner's insurance, you definitely want to get in touch with Jay because in addition to being a master elite installer, a GA, uh, GAF master elite installer, uh, five stars with the Better Business Bureau, accredited with good housekeeping, just, you know, he always gets those five-star mm -hmm. reviews. But Jay is also a former insurance agent. And so that's a really unique history and it's a really big advantage to you because if you have any uh, damage that is covered by your homeowner's insurance, he can help you navigate that process. And it's very helpful. And uh, also, you know, they, they do great remodeling work. They're just good people over there. And Jay is a lot of fun. So uh, get in touch with Jay. You can call him directly at 901-484-5645. Or go to BigMRoofingAndRemodeling.com. All right. Hey, Alan, you know, it's funny. I, I, in a minute, we're going to uh, get back into our cinder block discussion. But off the air, we were mentioning something. Uh, I, I had an interesting observation. Mm. And you kind of um, expanded on it. And I thought, why don't we just do this on the air? Uh, we were talking about the, um, the history of the air compressor. And I noted this uh, in 1650, there was a German scientist, Otto von Gierich. And it's mm -hmm. always funny how it's Otto von something, I guess. Well. But, but what I noticed in a lot of our salutes, Alan, if you go back in history, a lot of these inventors came from Germany. And then if you look at our space program, a lot of, uh, a lot of the inventors were from Germany. And uh, it seems like Germany has a very rich history of producing serious inventors. And I'm like, what, what, why do you think that is? What, is? what is it about their culture that's so big into inventing? Well, you know, you got to look at a little history, and not all human history is pleasant. Well, we it's, know that. It's, it's, a, it's a lot German, about yeah. being invaded. Right. Of Germany is just one of those areas that had a lot of great influences throughout history. Yeah. And really wound up with kind of a technical culture, uh, a, a production-based culture. Um, Max even threw in, and don't forget about the weather. You know, they're not exactly on the sunny shores of, you know, some... Uh, Mediterranean area, they're kind of stuck up in the mountains. And if it's freezing and blizzards, and and you got to get creative on how you produce and, food, yeah. how you keep warm, how you do everything. So, so it, it, somewhere in there, they they had a nice click over and have really produced a lot of. Uh, they, I'm trying to think, they just really have produced a lot of people that have made a lot of contributions. Yeah, very interesting. So, I mean, of course, we you know. We know that everybody's history is uh, light and dark too. A little, we know, little rough we, we know what happened yeah. back in the 30s and 40s, but uh, anyway, it just it was just sort of interesting that uh, and and then of course you know Japan's the same way. They had boy, you talk about uh, innovative technology in the way that they, especially with their electronics and automobiles. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're almost really second to none. You're perking my ears up, Joe. All right, go <laughs> ahead, Max. No, so. I, was just, I was just like saying thank you for satisfying the Japanese side of me. <laughs> well, the reason I mentioned that is because Max and I were discussing this uh, uh, one time. I'll, I'll bring this up and then we'll move along. But mm. um, one of the reasons I guess we could mention Toyota and a lot of the Japan, like Subaru, a lot of the uh, Japanese car manufacturers and a lot of the uh, Japanese electronics uh, manufacturers, they have a certain... Um, a certain way they they actually the culture that they cultivate. Okay, it's, go ahead. There's actually an official term for it. It's called kaizen. Tell tell us what kaizen is, Max, because it's interesting. Well, the way I kind of see it about it is is like in Toyota, for example, kaizen is this idea like you kind of incentivize your clients or your um, uh, like the people your employees to find defects in like the like in the like cars, and so you're. And then, like, to fit, help fix it so that when it goes off the line, you're actually producing, like, a really high-quality product. That's probably why, like, a lot of their cars 
are so reliable, don't break down, is because people take the time beforehand to, you know, inspect the cars, make sure, like, the defects are taken care of before just rolling it off the line. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I was watching a video about this, Alan. They said, uh, basically, if you work for, like, you know, one of these companies and uh, you go, you know what, this water pump is faulty. It, it could be improved by doing this, this, and this. Well, you just got yourself a big bonus. Mm-hmm. That, they, mm-hmm. they create a culture of wanting to constantly improve and innovate, which I think that's great, man. So, uh, so it's just interesting the different the different um, you know parts of the world where where they just excel well, at these things. So well, you know, and the interesting thing, I've worked for several organizations that, as we'll say, had their act together. Mm-hmm. And when you are looking for the answer that you need, not the answer that you want, yeah, and, or and the th- answer that might cost you a little money <clears throat> initially, well, but yeah. And, and I'm I'm going to tie this right back to DIY. Of when you are looking at a project, any project, you know, of course, you're you're looking at time, you're looking at money, and you're looking at quality. Mm-hmm. And everybody loves to say the three of these things are equal. They're not. Only one controls any and every project ever done. And people will argue this me- with me to the end of time, but I promise you it is either going to be quality, time, or money. One of these things rules supreme. So if you're trying to produce something of X quality, then however much time it takes to do it and however much money it takes to do it is just what it takes. Now, if you're trying to produce something that you can sell for X amount of dollars, then your quality and time have to fall in line underneath the money. All right, you know, Max, I, I hate to do it, I uh, hate, to, hate to say it again, but I have to agree with Alan. Uh, Alan's right. Well, I just said it in two words, but that is a good point, Alan, because, you know, we're sitting there, I know this isn't Motor Mouth Radio, but you're making me think of the uh, DeLorean because they had lofty ambitions about mm-hmm. what that car was going to be, and then when they were faced with the reality of the 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 money that they had to work with and the labor, you know, that they had to uh, – that, you know, because they they did them in uh, Northern Ireland where they didn't have a lot of experience with building right. cars, and so they really they did, it was really all about money. It was what they could afford to to make that because the Delorean is not like a it, it's got its problems. So well, it, it, it <laughs> it's was... a unique car, but uh, you're you're right. That's probably if if you're a company that's got plenty of funding, plenty of uh, you know R and D and all the you know you can. You can produce something, you know, well, using all three of those. I mean, but. I'll tie this all the way back to, so like you're looking at this bathroom downstairs and you're going, okay, here's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Of It's never a bad idea to know exactly what your budget is going to be before you start this project. So if you've got $12,000 to spend on this bathroom, guess what, folks? That That is the top end. Now, the trick is, what can you? How do you get the most bang for your buck out of that? Right. And you work with the proper, you, know, you work with the right vendors, you work with the right suppliers, and you try to get as much as you can for your budget. But it's never a bad idea to just be kind of brutally honest and go, eh, "We'd love to spend forty thousand dollars and have imported Peruvian marble, but guess what? Yeah. We, we can afford, you know, ten thousand dollars worth of." You know, locally sourced, locally found, uh, locally installed. So, so what are these three pillars again? Quality, you, money, you're and you're always going to be gonna, time, quality, and money. And money. Okay. Those are your three deciding factors in every business decision. All right. Hey, if you're out there and you agree with Alan, because I, I have to admit that's a good point, Alan. It's uh, you know, it's not a perfect world. Some businesses don't have the ability to do Mm -mm. everything they would like to do. And some people are trying, you know, maybe the economy. There's just a lot of factors that play into all of this. So, um, yeah, if you're ever wondering how we get uh, compressed siding, you know, (laughs) compressed board siding in the 70s, well, there you go. Somewhere in that. Very much so. All right. Well, I I didn't mean to eat up that segment, but it it was actually pretty interesting. So I I don't apologize. Anyway, when we come (laughs) back, I promise we will get to our cinder block uh, follow-up report. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. This castle is in unacceptable condition! Unacceptable! 
News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. <laughs> I wish that guy would just, you know, read the fine print. <laughs> we, we gave him the, uh, you know, the invoice. It, he, it's, he signed off on it. You know, anyway, whatever. I don't know. And welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilberth from Geeky Side, uh, or I'm sorry, DarkOakMedia.com. I can't, you know, you got so many different uh, yeah, Geeky Side TV, Dark Oak Press, Dark Oak Media. You know, we, you got to stay busy on the weekends. And uh, and we got our good buddy Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. Uh, or go to the Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, give us a like and check out the must-have item of the week, which I've already posted. And, uh, you know, send us messages that way. If you want to send us pictures or video, mm -hmm. uh, especially maybe of this nice snow. Uh, my daughter just texted me some. Uh, she's in Knoxville. She just uh, texted me uh, some some pictures. I'm going to check them out at the break. So, um, Alan, you know, it's interesting. We were talking. We had an interesting discussion. We kind of called an audible. We started mm. talking about some of the uh, different parts of the world, like in Germany or Japan or anything, uh, uh, where they cultivate uh I don't know. They they have a strong history of uh, you know really good technology and really right. good invention and stuff. And uh, it it's um it's just interesting uh, that it's it, it's it's a strong part of their culture. And uh, you know who else uh, has a culture like that in their company? Boy, mm. what a sloppy segue that was. That's so, all right. I bet you're talking about Mike Serifolian. Yeah, our buddy Mike Serifolian at Tri-State Interiors. Um, they okay. So their focus, if they, like we said, if there was a, a chain of command. First off, at the top of the top of the list is craftsmanship. Then keeping a low overhead. Then keeping up with the uh, latest technology mm -hmm. and being uh, efficient. And then at the you could say under that is uh, sourcing your materials regionally. Yes, we can't say all locally because some of it is not. It, you know, some of it is right here in the mid south. Mm -hmm. Others are maybe you know within a two or three hour drive in different parts of a uh, Tennessee. But Mike's just a big believer in that. So if you're remodeling your kitchen, believe us, folks, this is a it's a big undertaking, and you're going to get a wide variety of quotes and a wide variety of cultures uh, at different businesses. Yeah, so, it, it, it'll vary drastically. Yeah. So uh, Mike Serifolian, for one thing, they serve the whole tri-state area, which is great. And uh, that they, like we say, Mike will, uh, he'll come out, they give you a quote. And uh, also, they will do a 3D rendering that you can download on your smartphone <laughs> or your computer and uh, do a, basically a virtual mm -hmm. tour of your kitchen uh, or bathroom before you uh, do anything. You, once you get the design set, then he will order all of the parts and all of the materials you're going to need, and then they start the project. They don't do it. They don't wait. Till, That's right. So you're not waiting on anything. And then uh, at the, it, you know, so it finishes as quickly as possible uh, with the highest quality. So it's, and, and at a reasonable price. So definitely get in touch with uh, Mike Serifolian at Tri-State Interiors. You can call him directly at 901-409-1333 or go to tristateinteriorsllc.com. So, all right, Alan. So last week, uh, folks, if you weren't listening, just to update you really quick, I'm working on a project and boy, I am getting a lot of mileage out of this job, Alan. Mm. I'm, I'm working on the patio. I'm working on a right. patio cover and a screened in porch, minding my own business. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, all these other issues are coming up that I'm that I'm helping my uh, customer with. But uh, including this hundred, it's it's about 150 feet long. I told you mm -hmm. it's a cinder block wall um, that um, it has textured cinder block to make it look more right. decorative. But it's basically cinder block. Uh, it goes up about four feet, and then above that is um, about four feet of wooden fence. So it gives you right. the two tone, and then it's got cinder block columns in the middle to divide it up. Well, as I mentioned. The um, the <laughs> whoever built it didn't quite finish it. They kind of I guess mm. they were eager to just kind of move along. They didn't put tops on it, so it from the ground it looks great. However, uh, it's yeah. completely exposed, and water is just soaking the inside of this wall. And I can't imagine what it's doing when you get these uh, big s shifts in temperature. Yesterday, you know, it, it you went from warm weather to basically sub freezing temperatures. So if you got ice in there, anyway. Uh, you said uh, I was discussing all the dynamics involved with this, and in, in, in shortly I'm going to discuss the uh, drainage issues that mm. this thing created too. But Alan, you said a few people weighed in. They were they oh, having issues with their cinder block it, it, as well. Been, I have been I have been like the cinder block answer man all week. Okay. Uh, every place I've gone, somebody has walked up to me and gone, I blah blah. Let me tell you what happened to me when I was oh, doing yeah. cinder blocks and. Uh, 
You know, so to quickly recap, yes, cinder blocks are made out of fly ash, which is a waste product from coal production and that type of stuff. Uh, no, it's not concrete. Yes, it will fall apart in water eventually. Uh, for the gentleman who had one in his fish pond, um, <laughs> yeah, they, it, it, the, the water will eventually eat away at it and, and remove Break material. It down. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you were that was your that was a, an interesting contribution you made, Alan. You were telling us about it's fly ash, which is like, huh? I I, I just thought it was ground up like part, you know, pieces of rock or no, something. But no, you're saying no. which is like a waste product, right? Right. From uh, from uh, coal use, and now there's other aggregate and stuff put in there, but basically at the end of the day, it's not a concrete block. No. Now we use them as if they were utterly indestructible, but is you know anybody that's ever dropped one accidentally on the corner will know they actually break eh, fairly not that hard, fairly take, easily for something that you think's made out of rock. If you took a, a an average hammer. Yeah. And you whack the side of a cinder block, it's, it's going to break. Yeah. yeah. So. so the big thing is the cinder block, while you know, when we just we just got through talking about time, money, and quality, the cinder block definitely meets the money quality of a, con of a construction material because they are very rigid. They're good and sturdy. We've used them in, they are time proven and time tested, mm -hmm. but. They're not, you know, they're 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 not concrete. So they need sealing. They need to be painted, sealed, filled. They need to be capped. They need to be, you know, it's not just a product you just set out there by itself. It needs to be finished off. Yeah, and it's 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 a lot like uh, it's in a, in a different context, it reminds me of sheetrock. Sheetrock, for what it is, is great. Is amazing. It doesn't it doesn't support weight. It doesn't you know it, it can't do everything. It's so. not going to make a good roof. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So maybe that's the thing. Just uh, rethinking the cinder block so you don't you know you don't have uh, false expectations and you just realize it's well, got its limitations. You, it, know, so. you know, especially when it comes to water. Oh, yeah. Of that is where our failure is, and being in the mid south for all right for those of you listening out west, of you worry about the dry. I am originally from Texas, and I've lived in West Texas, and you worry about literally the soil walking away from the footers of your building because it gets so dry. That makes sense. It's it's hot but dry. It's yeah. it's no it's like humidity a blow dryer, at all. Just like yeah, you get in the middle of August and you honestly have dust right instead of soil now when you go from i'm gonna say the edge of arkansas back to the east mm -hmm. well our other our problem is too much moisture and like we just had yesterday we had a surprise three four inches of snow uh that is half an inch of rain well, I was about to say it's so going to melt gonna today. So that's going to be quite so a bit of water today. Everything's going to get wet again. And, yeah, uh, and it's good. now snow is a good soak in. Mm -hmm. It's not like a rapid. Ooh, it rained real quick and it drained off. Yeah, this stuff is going to seep into every place water can get into today. Yeah, I not to. I don't want to sidetrack, but I'm curious if this killed off any mosquitoes. That's like the only benefit i could see because a lot of them i mean they were out they've been out for the last couple of weeks I'm, I'm but sure i wonder if got a few knocks out a few of them so yeah. but uh anyway it's it uh, we appreciate you following up uh people if you were if you were any of the people that pulled off uh stopped alan on the street to talk about <laughs> cinder blocks we appreciate it but uh alan uh in that vein we're gonna shift gears we're gonna talk about drainage drama oh, because boy. boy i'm getting like i said i'm getting a lot of mileage out of this job so mm -hmm. to paint a picture folks if you if you're thinking of this big long um this big long brick wall basically right it goes and cinder block wall i should say it's it's a, it goes at the property line so and right. it's a really deep property. So it's a, you know it goes way back there. So suddenly, what what used to be a wooden fence where water would just flow underneath it uh, is not going anywhere. No. And the other problem is the neighbor on the other side. Well, I say neighbor. It's they built some uh, condominiums right next door, okay. and it's now two feet above uh, her fence. And so she's like in this valley, and it's it's causing erosion and drainage. And this this uh, problem didn't exist when they built the house. When they built the house, everything was drained properly, right. and and the drainage system worked. 
Now she's having to install like a $40,000 drainage system, and it's really nothing she did. It's it's what the construction was going on around her. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to unpack uh, after the break because, you know, that's it's, that's what happens. Yeah. Drainage drama. You it know? is very common. Yeah. So, um, you know, be a good neighbor, I suppose, is one of the messages here. Mm. Or be at least conscientious because you may you may love that new construction project that you're putting together, but you got to think about how it's going to affect everybody uh, around you. So that's going to be interesting. We're, uh, we're going to get into that when we come back. So, um, but... Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, Alan, it's just, uh, water. And we say it, how, how often do we say it? Water really is the enemy. It, well, you gotta, you gotta learn to live with it. Well, we're going to try. So, uh, we're, we're going to do that when we come back. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio coming to you from News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. And welcome to Hour 2 of Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from darkoakmedia.com. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And you can also go to the uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page and uh, give us a like. And uh, if you've got uh, Spotify, how's this, Alan? Because uh, Alan and I each prefer our own platforms mm -hmm. for listening mm -hmm. to Tool Talk Radio. I'm a big Spotify uh, listener, um, ma uh, you know, Max, I don't know what you listen on. He probably doesn't even, he probably tries to get as far away from it as he can. Please. No, I'm just the guy in the middle watching as you guys tear each other apart. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and Alan, of course, is partial to uh, YouTube. So mm -hmm. either way, subscribe to our show and you'll get alerts every time, uh, you know, the, a new show drops. And of course, uh, give us a nice rating and review because, uh, you know, what's fun, Alan, we've said this before, radio, boy, it sure is different than it was like 20 years ago or so. People can listen from anywhere in the world at you know, any time of the day, and, and they are, right? So. And the scary part is, and they do. Uh, we have uh, an increased presence in India this mm -hmm. week. Uh, of course, we have all of our buddies down there in the Dominican Republic, which, you know, hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're also picked up in Canada, the U.K. We've also got Scotland and Ireland. Well, we and that that's where some of our uh, some of our relatives oh, are at. But we got uh, a few I'm, relatives over there, so that helps. If you're out there and you're listening from Iceland, because you know I got Icelandic mm. relatives, or uh, from Japan, you know Max would love to hear from yeah, you. So let if we got any Japanese listeners, we'd love to know. So, but uh, it's fun. It's it's really kind of a, an interesting time to be in in uh, in radio. So it is. Well, Alan, before the break, um, we were talking about this drainage drama situation that's been uh, partially created by this giant you know, uh, wall that's, uh, you know, but, uh, we've got a caller on the line and we're going to, so we're going to uh, put a pin in that. We'll get to that. We'll soon. circle back to that in uh, a minute. Uh, right. This is somebody that we met at the uh, home show of the mid South, uh, Natalia, Natalia, are you there? I'm here. Hey, Natalia. So we met you and your husband, Timothy at the uh, home show of the mid South. And we appreciate you calling in. You said, um, you've, you've got an interesting project in mind. And I said, let's, let's flesh this out on the air. Cause, uh, we're all about unique uh, ha uh, home projects. So tell us, uh, tell us what your uh, vision is, we should say. So um, with the market kind of the way it is right now, we were trying to find something more affordable to do uh, as far as moving into a home and came across Barn Dominiums. Um, so, Barn Dominiums. But other, there you go. Yeah. So other than that, you really can't find any information about them. Um, so I, you know, was kind of wondering how much they even cost, how different they are than putting up just a regular, I don't even know what you call those buildings. Um, <laughs> Probably pre-finished you know, <laughs> steel buildings that you can, you know. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but what was interesting about this now, uh, we should say you and you and your husband are a younger couple, right? Uh, you know, I don't yeah. know what, era we call it they're not millennials anymore they're, they're too young for like this us, Joe. right but you um <laughs> but i like the out of the box thinking uh thinking i don't even i think we were even somehow even started talking about uh yurts and things like that right. but uh but you like the what is it about the barn dominium that appeals to you i should say besides just the fact that it might possibly be more affordable what is it about the layout of this thing that that you appreciate uh mostly that you know eventually as we get older it can 
become more of a shop for my husband to work in or maybe have a second floor if they can have a second floor. Uh, Mother-in-law um, suite to house one of the parents or something like that. Just that it can have use after the fact. Okay. After I we maybe build another actual house. Not that it, that's not an actual house, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I think it's interesting because uh, the way the way a barn is structured, it's it's designed to have a lot of open. It doesn't really have any load bearing mm -hmm. walls, right, Alan? It's mostly supported based on the shape of the roof, and you know you're going to have a second floor, obviously, and you can it can probably be a sort of loft situation. But uh, I guess the trick is finding a barn that's useful enough, or you know. Sometimes building it from scratch might even be be the answer, but I think it's all about an open floor plan and being modular. What do you think, Alan? Well, so. well all right, we're gonna let me back up to the roof. Okay. Of all right, one of the projects I'm working on right now is a renovation project, and the original structure underneath. And all right, we're gonna separate the structure from the roof. Okay, so everybody just bear with me. Okay. The original building underneath the roof uh, was a bit of a hodgepodge. A little old building and then some new stuff and then a couple other things got added on and a couple other things and wasn't very well done. Right. Okay, so we're going to talk about the hodgepodge. However, the roofing system they put over this was much like a standard barn, a.k.a. the roof and outer walls all bear the load and the support. So that left the entire interior basically up to your wildest imagination. You could even go in and if you were modular enough, you could add a wall later, you could remove a wall, you could change things however you wanted because you weren't worried about any of those structural weights right. pressing down on the inside. Yeah. So when she started talking about the barn dominium, I started thinking about a project I saw in West Texas, which was almost exactly that. Yeah. Uh, they had taken a very large barn-style roof and had basically built four condos in it, two side-by-side side and back-to-back. Back. Yeah. So they all pre-existed under this one big roof. The roof really is only nominally attached because it's bearing its own weight. It has its own exterior walls. Yeah. So that left the whole inside up to your kind of dream. Another project I saw was a gentleman that had bought a warehouse and turned part warehouse, part house. Right. And had just gone in inside and basically built a little mini house inside the big building. Well, hey, Natalia, how much research have you done on this? Is this just sort of a, a and, and is your husband in agreement? That's kind of a big uh, factor here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, he's so in agreement. So how much uh, how much have you looked into this? Because it's funny, Alan mentioned the roof. I was starting to think about the foundation, but uh, what what have you what have you discovered? Uh, um, so far, I have found like companies that you can kind of buy the buildings from. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't know that we considered that there might already be buildings that, up on property that we could just fix up, but. Um, uh, you know, found companies that you kind of buy this kit and you put it up yourself. Right. But when they say yourself, I don't know if they mean like us actually, or we yeah. hire people <laughs> to do it. Um, then the foundation, obviously you have to lay your own foundation. Um, I haven't done too much. I'm a student at Southwest and at Memphis. So um, well, we haven't really had a ton of time to do research about it. Um, I gotcha. Try to ask questions of people that we know that kind of post pictures about them and stuff on Facebook. Um, but nobody really knows. They, they've kind of just seen them and they don't know anybody that has one or, um, you know, they just like the way they look. They don't know anything about them. Okay. Hey, uh, Natalia, can you hang on one second? Because uh, we, we've got a break yeah. coming up. But uh, I've got some thoughts. I know Alan, of course, is going to have some thoughts. But um, I, I, we would love any builders, too, to contact us about mm -hmm. that. And you can contact us after the show as well because we're going to help you with this. I think this is a, a, a exciting <laughs> project, but um, it's obviously going to take a, a little research to get it done. But, Natalia, hang on. We're going to take a quick break, okay? Uh, you're listening okay, to Tool you. Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. 
Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Gonna paint your wagon, gonna paint it fine. Gonna use oil-based paint, cause the wood is pine. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. I know he's singing, but he doesn't sound all that enthused about his job. <laughs> he's probably been sniffing in too many paint fumes. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. Uh, like our buddy Nat, uh, Natalia has done, she's on the line right now with us, Alan. So, Natalia, uh, for people just tuning in, Natalia is interested. Her and her husband want to build a barn dominium, which I think is self-explanatory, but mm -hmm. it's basically a barn finished like in, you know to a house basically mm -hmm. and some of these some of these barn dominiums can be quite you know luxurious so oh, but uh, extravagant even natalia you're a young couple you're still finishing up school you're thinking you know obviously you got to think about a budget and everything and we've discussed some of the pros and cons of this so i want to i want to throw my two cents in and then alan has done some quick research for you so we're gonna we're gonna try to do our best to to give you some good input here but um my thought was um, if you unless unless you encounter a barn that was like the birthplace of Sea Biscuit or something or someplace that has a really interesting story, I would just I would just look at this as you're just going to build this thing from scratch. Because Alan, aren't for one thing, barns generally are open, right? They have a dirt floor. They they may not have a they might have a some. It depends. And and even if they don't, you still got to uh, dig for plumbing. You've got to, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and you got to mm -hmm. hope that that structure, which was uh, originally just created to be, you know, probably isn't even insulated or anything. is basically the right. old hay and everything. It's probably got moisture and mold issues. I would just start from scratch, personally. I think it would be cheaper in the long run. And then you can find the land in exactly the place you want to, you know, you want to live. And, um, and these pre-finished um, steel buildings, like they're basically, like you said, a kit. You don't want to envision this as just some steel building. You can put any kind of siding you want on this. You can make it, mm -hmm. you can design it almost to exactly to your taste. So this, the, the, the beauty of the steel is just the structure that it gives you. It's a big, solid structure, and you can do anything you want on the inside. You can put walls anywhere you want because none of them are load-bearing, and they're, they're much more affordable. Well, they're more affordable than you might think, but that that's my two cents. So what what do you think of that, Natalia? Um, that is kind of what I thought as well, which is, I guess, something that Timothy's been doing a lot of is looking at land right now. Right. Because um, we really want to get out of our rental. Um, and so I, I guess another thought was how quickly, how, I don't want to say easier quickly, would it be to get one of these up? Um, because I'm not, and would it would it be livable while you're doing stuff to it? Do you know what I mean? Like on the yeah. inside, like if that's a kitchen and a bathroom, um, how livable I, I, could it be while I you're doing you, everything? Uh, else? Yeah, I think if you've got a high tolerance for dust, <laughs> or, no, I think honestly, I don't think it would be that bad. If you're you're young, you're you're tough. You guys can handle this. You're from Chicago too, yeah. by the way. Which uh, yeah. and actually, Alan, she's a fellow Cubs fan. We won't get I, sidetracked we, we, on we that. Know. We know. We one know. of the one we of the know. other reasons I was oh. happy to take her call, but uh, <laughs> Natalia, I personally think we, uh, you know, when my wife and I got married, we had. Um, uh, shortly after we got uh, twins, we, we had like three kids in, in the middle of doing um, an addition to our house and we dealt with it. It was fine. You know, when you're, you know, I wouldn't do this these days because I'm, you know, I just, it's just not as interesting to me, <laughs> but I think you get the, the, maybe, maybe you get the, uh, the plumbing in, you get the kitchen situated, you get your bathroom and bedroom and then just sort of build around it. And I, I love the modular effect of this i think i love the way you can change the layout and everything it's 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 a cool you know i will say one thing for your generation you're really open to new ways of uh you know new housing you know like i said people your age are living in yurts people your age are living in mm. you know funky loft apartments and things like that but uh you know i i like the notion of maybe just building from scratch and, and finding some land yeah you know that you can do so, and, and that way you can choose where you want to live. Cause Alan, you, you found quite a number of listings, but, but basically you got to go to where they are. Right. So, well, 
Uh, let's let's just say there is far more of this going on than you would imagine. Okay. Uh, there are actually real estate companies that specialize in burn dominiums. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one that even specializes in burn dominiums all over Tennessee, sure. wherever you'd like to find one. Uh, there's a number of companies willing to sell you plans, a number of companies willing mm-hmm. to sell you kits. Uh, a side note to this is a lot of these are called post and beam houses. Okay. So you, you can expand it besides just bar, barn dominium. The, of, this looks like it is, now I knew this was a big thing out in Texas, but it also looks like this is a fairly big idea going on in East Tennessee. Yeah. Um, however, as I'm looking through, I'm finding listings for this side of Tennessee. Not specifically in Shelby County. I haven't looked that deeply yet, but uh, I'm seeing everything from uh, converted antique barns. And again, Joe has a point with there's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done before you begin. But the process of the modern process of construction would take care of a lot of your issues. Yeah. So if you found a place that had a structure, fabulous. If not of there's there's as many options to this as there is for any other form of construction it is basically just choosing uh, as they like to say on the diy shows you're just choosing your bones well and and what you do on side of that is really going to be up to you let me throw this out to our other listeners so if you're out there maybe you've maybe you've put together a pre-finished uh, steel building mm-hmm. or maybe you've uh maybe done you've a done a barn dominium maybe you've done a post yeah. and be maybe you've uh had a good experience or a bad experience or maybe you're a builder we uh get in touch with us you can still um contact us you know even even when we're off the air you can mm-hmm. leave a message and we'll we'll, we'll connect you with uh Natalia, you can call us at 901-683-0989. And, uh, but Natalia, I feel like um, I, it sounds like you're steering towards maybe a newer construction, which I, I personally back you mm-hmm. up on that. I think that's a good decision. But is that is that where you're going with this? Yes, it is. Definitely. Oh. Um, we were definitely thinking going newer because, like you had mentioned about not knowing about, um, you know, how old. Well, we would know how old the structure is, but what else is going on in there? And um, it, you know, we could kind of make it whatever we want, but I guess you maybe could do that with anything. I'm not sure. But um, we also want to have a basement. Oh, so we'd have to. Mm, okay. Hang on. I'm sorry. You triggered me. And I grew up in Chicago <laughs> and I know all about basements. But if you're living in Tennessee, why do you want a basement, Natalia? I'm very curious about that because I, I don't I, want I, a basement myself, but. I, um, you know, the basement was just kind of, it, the basement wasn't like a storage place to everybody that, you know, I knew it was always like where the family gathered or, um, even though I you obviously have the rest of the house, but if you have a huge family, you know, the, it was the place where, um, it's the rumpus room. Like I said, where our family gathers, where we had parties, where like yeah. one of my uncle's has like to basically his man basement down there. Hey, Natalia, <laughs> we're coming up on a break. I, I, and I didn't want to, we don't want to eat up the whole show on this, but you did trigger me with the basement because I grew up with basements. <laughs> I grew up with mm. finished basements. It's a different culture up here. I, we're going to wrap up with this, uh, but but can you stick around for one more segment, Natalia? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. Gosh, yeah. she's really triggering me today, mm-hmm. Alan. All right, but we're, <laughs> now, we're, now we're staring into basement discussions. Oh, yeah. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio here on News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Just a few more seconds of mental preparation, and I'll be painting this wall. News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. A lot of painting discussion going mm. on today. It, the conditions couldn't be worse. Snow, <laughs> ice, rain. No wonder you need mental preparation there. No kidding. Anyway, welcome back to a Tool Talk Radio coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901 683 
800-529-0989, uh, like our friend Natalia has done. Natalia's, uh, we're going to get back to our discussion with her. I thought we were going to wrap things up, uh, but she suddenly triggered me right before the break <laughs> with her with her basement talk, her mm, reckless basement mm. talk. But uh, before we get to that, we're going to talk about some people who are not reckless in any way, Alan. No, the good your people- barn dominium will need them. Yeah, your barn dominium may want this. Uh, the good people at uh, Shelf Genie of the Mid-South, basically, if you've got kitchen cabinets or bathroom cabinets mm. or a pantry, uh, so, uh, these these uh, applications work in a closet. You may want this in your linen closet in oh, the hallway. Goodness, yes. These things are great. They have uh, full glide-out systems that are custom designed to your home because we all have seen it. We You open that kitchen uh, cabinet door and everything is thrown together, and it's a big mess, and you can't even see what's in the back of it. And there's all this wasted space because there's mm-hmm. all this open air that it's not being utilized. Well, Shelf Genie of the Mid-South looks at that, and they uh, create a custom design solution just for you. They take advantage of every square inch of your cabinets or closets, and uh, they create full glide-out systems that you can, you know, with the with their finger touch, Alan, you can just They're glide amazing. these babies out. If you've got mobility issues, maybe you have difficulty, you know, getting to that lower cabinet. It's great, and the uh, the custom uh, design consultation is absolutely free, which mm-hmm. is great. I mean, this is a very in depth consultation. They just do great work. the The work is guaranteed. Everybody on their team is top notch, and they stand behind what they do. So, get in touch with the good people at uh, Shelf Genie of the Mid South. You can call them at 901-422-8225 or go to shelfgenie.com forward slash Mid-South Memphis. All right, Alan, uh, we're, you know, we're just minding our own business. We had meant to talk about uh, cinder blocks and flooding and drainage and everything. Mm. And then uh, our friend Natalia called in. We met her at the uh, home show of the Mid-South, her and her husband, uh, Timothy, talking about barn dominiums. And they said, hey, this might be an interesting thing to discuss on the air. So she she called in and... and uh, uh, Natalia, it looks like you've agreed to go ahead and maybe go with a newer construction, but right at the end of our discussion in the last segment, you started talking uh, this crazy talk about basements. And, crazy talk. Oh, my gosh. So, so Natalia, I grew up in Chicago. You and I are fellow Cubs fans. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a little annoyed with baseball people right now, but whatever. So, mm-hmm. But um, then you started talking about basements, and from what I heard, it sounded like a lot of sentimental stuff. Well, you know, people in Chicago had basements and they were finished, like a uh, like our friend Stu McVicker that has mm-hmm. a Club mm-hmm. Four Hundred. It's a Cubs man cave down there. But here in the in the South, I'm I'm not a fan of basements, Natalia. I'm sorry, I don't see a lot of basements. All the basements I've seen leak and they smell mildewy, Alan. And mm. I don't even know how many builders have experience building basements out here. I don't see a lot of benefit, Natalia. I'm sorry. I would I would be more inclined to go get a yurt and stick it behind the barn and <laughs> let your mother in law stay there. <laughs> but what do you are, are you married to this idea of a basement, Natalia? I I don't like it. I'm I mean, sorry. I've always wanted one. <laughs> okay, well, it might be pricey. I'm um, just saying it well, might change the, yes, the price yes. a lot. Water so. is going to be not your friend. We yeah. have we have too much water to really have just kind of a freestyle basement from some drier part of the country. Yeah. So there is a lot of engineering that goes into making a basement dry and safe. Put it up on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> that Get at the peak helps. of a hill. Yeah, yeah, and, it actually uh, but, helps a lot. Yeah. yeah I, I don't, you know, now this would be interesting, Natalia, because we would hope, can you stay in touch with us throughout this process? Will you keep us yeah. posted on this? But uh, start Absolutely. getting quotes, and I'd be interested to see the difference in price between a quote with a basement versus just pouring it on a slab. So, but, um, I, uh, I guess I never really considered, I mean, we have, we haven't, we talked about it, but there wasn't much consideration as to the different types of land and here yeah. and the one, in Chicago. the one advantage I could see though, Natalia is in the summer, it might be a lot cooler in the basement. All right. What, what Alan, you found some news break. Uh, well, yeah, I was just looking at this and I was going, uh, all right, but well, before you go buy a piece of land, I, I'm going to tell you to do a, uh, go, go do a Google search. And there, uh, there's even a company in Memphis that's willing to design, plan, and build your barn dominium for you. Um, and there are several for sale um, in Shelby County and accompanying counties, both in Tipton and Fayette. Well, so Somerville, mm-hmm. and so you can definitely go look at 
some pre-existing barn dominiums right here in the area. And, uh, you know, see what they did. See what you like. See what you don't like. But, but you know, Natalia, you're an ambitious, uh, go-getting uh, fellow <laughs> Chicagoan, and you probably want to do a lot of this work yourself, right? Because uh, we yeah, encourage yeah, that. We get do. your friends over there, buy a, a few cases of beer, get some mm. pizza. and Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of these pre-finished uh, steel buildings, you can do a lot of the work yourself. Oh, yeah. That's what they're designed for. Yeah. We, we encourage that, you know. And that was also um, kind of the idea, too, because my husband... Um, you know, he's, uh, uh, works in maintenance at a company here and well in Mississippi. And then, um, you know, when he was in the army, uh, and he was in Iraq, they kind of did, they did a lot of building there yeah. and wow. um, he's a military guy. He can handle this. Yeah. yeah. I so realize it's not the a- same. You can have a good old fashioned yeah. barn raising. Absolutely, we love that. You know, yeah. we you know just when you start losing faith in the next generation, Alan, uh, somebody like Timothy <laughs> and Natalia come along and, and like restore going, yes. your faith. But this is exciting. Just please, please rethink the basement. I mean, I'm not telling you not to do <laughs> okay. it, but just you know, just you, you think of the money you could save and what you could do with that. That you could you could do Agreed. an addition. So, but please keep us posted, Natalia. It's a lot of fun having you on the show. So. Thank you. Thank you. This has been awesome. Send us pictures and uh, go Cubs. So, but uh, Natalia, yeah, we got to right. cut you loose. We didn't plan on keeping you on for, you know, this long, but you're you're just a uh, fascinating okay. individual. So, stay in touch, all right? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Natalia. Good talking to you. That is interesting. Yeah, you Alan. too. Very, very interesting. And you know, like I said, the bar, the, the the basement, ugh, man. I'm just I have happy I I used to have a workshop in in the basement of our house in Chicago, but man, they and and the the I should say the workshop that eventually flooded mm. when the sub pump <laughs> broke and we had a tornado roll through our town. So I'm just not a fan, and I'm sorry. Uh, but. You know, I I am a fan of anybody looking at alternative living conditions. That I'm a fan of. of yeah. They're uh, oh my gosh! I mean, it's there are a lot of people going to the big box store and ordering basically mini houses. Mm-hmm. Of you put two or three of those together, uh, we've seen construction involving railway cars. We've seen constructions involving an airplane body. Sure, we've seen just some great alternative ideas, and you know, really, I guess it doesn't really matter the frame, so long as you meet all of the requirements you need for a comfortable living. And safety codes, of course. Sure. You don't want to live in something that's going to go up like a tender box or is going to easily get blown over or knocked over. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's uh, thinking outside of the box. Is, it's The time has come. I just love it. And it, it's not just, you know, it's not a cookie cutter type of idea. No. It's, it's out of the box thinking. And I like the notion of uh, how they discuss. They want to sort of, the, the home's going to sort of evolve. They're not building a home with everything fixed in place, they're building this with the idea, hey, one day we may move that wall or we yep. may move this thing over here. So um, They may put that amphitheater on the back. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> so uh, we salute you. Timothy and Al, uh, Natalia, we salute you on this 100%. Hey, Alan, we got a, we got a kind of crunch here. So uh, yeah. I'm holding, uh, we're going to shift really quickly to our must-have item of the week because it's very easy okay. to, to, uh, to discuss. But I've already posted on our Facebook page, but tell people what I'm holding up you here. You have a manual mini socket drive. Driver. Yeah, I think Love that's what it's called. Uh, it's like a screwdriver with the square attachment that you get, you know, when you for mm-hmm. a socket wrench. And this is the mini one, which is the key here, Alan, because um, uh, sometimes, you know, using a socket, you know, the, the whole point of it is that if you got a tight bolt or something, you need that extra torque. Well, sometimes you just need to play. You need to get to a certain area right. that's difficult to reach. And it's maybe it's not all that uh, difficult to un to uh it's not all that tight, but you just need to be able to get to it. So I keep this thing handy. I use it all the time. It's a, and you can just change out the sockets. It's cheap. I mean, this mm. thing, I, I bought the, uh, this is, this is one of these where I know I always say it only takes a little more to go first class for this type of operation. Just get the, the easy one. You can probably get a, a whole socket set with this uh, screwdriver attachment for like 
10 or 15 bucks. Honestly. And plus you can buy the auxiliary, the one that you want, because I actually have two of those. Yeah. I have one straight like yours, and right. the other one, I actually put a 90-degree bend in it about an inch up. Oh, nice. So I could get down in there and get a good crank on stuff. Yeah, very interesting. So, But uh, but they're great. They're, we're all about portability. Sometimes that's what you need. And then you can, uh, if you're somebody like Alan who has a tool belt holster, you can have that thing uh, ready for a quick draw release. So, you know. Anyway, well, Alan, we got a lot to get to in this last segment, but it was fun talking to, uh, to Natalia. That, right. that was an interesting discussion, but uh, we'll get into it uh, when we come back. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Everything that has transpired has done so according to my desire. News Talk 98.9, The Roar. Memphis. You know what, Alan? Today's show has not transpired as we had foreseen, but I think it actually is the better for it. Uh, that was a lot of fun talking to Natalia. How do you know it wasn't according to his design? Ah, uh, good point. Oh, yeah, he, he he's the puppet master behind it all. So, But uh, anyway, welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry, and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbert from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max behind the glass. You can call or text us if you're really fast at uh, the Big M Roofing and Remodeling <laughs> Hotline at 901-683-0989. Like our friend um, Natalia just did. She's uh, She's got a really interesting idea, you know, about building a barn dominium. And yep. we're going to be following uh, their career with great interest and uh, uh, following the project with great interest. So, um, Alan, uh, we got a lot to get to. Uh, real quick, let me just get my shameless plug mm. out of the way. If you need a Pound deck, it through. and and keep in mind, folks, if you if you do hire me, you, you may be discussed on the air. So we won't get <laughs> name names, but man, I'm getting a lot of mileage about this on this current job that I'm working on. But if you need a deck or a pergola or a patio cover or a screened in porch or really any uh, project made out of wood for the outside of your home, give me a call at 901-921-7105. Uh, or visit my website, doorshomes.com. And if you're out there and you're in the trades and maybe you're, um, you, you've had experience with these barn dominiums, I'd love to talk to you anyway. Mm. We can, maybe we can put you in touch with, uh, Timothy and Natalia and see oh, yeah. if we can, uh, you can help them avert some problems and maybe create good opportunities. But, um, Alan, let's, let's throw it to you. What's going on, uh, over in the world of darkoakmedia.com? Well, uh, we'll give a quick little shout out back to the home show, The Mid South, and to Scott J. Carroll. We just posted his adventures and misadventures through the uh, home show on uh, Entertainment Spotlight. Ah, the gift that just keeps on giving. It I does. Mean, that, that, we, there's still fallout from the home show, positive uh, fallout. We're still but, yeah. having an absolute blast. And to everybody we met at the home show, thank you so much. It was, uh, was absolutely a great way to start off the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And it, I, I know there's been a lot of, uh, you know, because all of our sponsors were at the home show. Mm -hmm. And I know they're following up on phone calls and, and appointments and they got slammed. I know Shelf Genie just is oh, now buried with appointments. So, so But uh, it is a lot of fun. And then you get to meet people, you know. Yep. Uh, meet listeners and uh, so Scott J. Carroll you know he's he he had his camera out the whole time so. oh he had a blast okay so how do people uh, how do the people uh, get in on the uh, all Dark they Oak gotta Media do community? well they can go to uh, the Roku television and look up geekysidetv.com you can go to the web look up geekysidetv.com or you can just pop over to darkoakmedia.com and I have links there for all of it Okay, awesome. Well, Alan, er earlier in the show, I talked about this drainage drama mm -hmm. that has been, uh, if you're just tuning in, I don't have time to recap it all, but let's just put it this way. Uh, this this customer where I'm working, they, she lives in a home where when it was built, they didn't have any drainage issues. Over the years, uh, a giant, like I said, 150-foot wall, uh, like a, mm. a, a cinder block wall was built on one side of the property, and then on the other side, uh, some uh, condominiums were built, and the the condominiums were built like a good two feet above her property line, so it's it's just creating this whole almost like a river. It's almost like a swimming pool when it rains back there, it's and it's causing a pond. Ero yeah. like serious erosion at the back of her property. And it you know what I was thinking about, Alan, is I know that you have to take out uh, permits. I know that you have to submit building plans to like the uh, you know to to you might have to submit them to the city and things mm -hmm. like that. Well. Is, am I missing something? It seems like part of that planning has to be, how is this going to affect the drainage of your neighbors, right? I mean, 
it I does. see a lot of problems like this around town. Of Well, for a while of around the Memphis area, that really wasn't paid that much attention to. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so there are going to be a lot of older properties that, you know, maybe you had good drainage when the house was built in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Of, but your yard level has raised. The area has changed. Other construction has gone in. And the other thing that happens is unintended consequences. Talk to me. So you have always wanted one of those beautiful steps going up your hill. Well, when they come in and cut in and they rearrange all of that and put in all of that block and all of that stone, well, now it doesn't react the same way it used to. Right. Uh, Now you may have just built yourself a series of rice paddies going up the hill. You know. Of another big one is like your decorative wall. You put in a great big, you you change out the type of fence, mm-hmm. and let's say you do have a lot of drainage from your yard and all of the grass clippings and stuff all wind up stuffed under the edge of the fence. Well, now your yard doesn't drain. No. So it, you really have to, uh, you really have to look at this periodically. Well, another thing too, Alan, is uh, sometimes you'll see uh, the, you know, okay, this is usually, I guess these were created for... The purposes of spraying your home, like uh, for for termites and things right. like that. At the bottom of a, an exterior wall, you'll see spaced out a bunch of little holes. Right. And they stick the sprayer in there. Well, if you decide to go ahead and build yourself a, uh, pour yourself a uh, concrete patio right at the level of these uh, holes, if you didn't notice them, well, now instead of the the water just running down the wall into the ground, it's going to be it's now finding its way shuttled, into your right. house. So, yes. boy, it's... I. I Drainage is just such a big deal, especially here in the mid south. And 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 it might it might only be an issue once every two or three years when you get that really big torrential rain. But it is going to happen eventually, you know. Well, or it might happen every time it rains. Well, but. there are a lot of people that have uh, drainage concrete areas through their backyards, right? And yep. if you happen to be the yard that has the actual drain access point. If that thing gets blocked up, congratulations, you have an instant pond. Mm-hmm. The other issue that you run into periodically around the area is that the concrete pathways under your yard have failed. Talk and about now, that because that's a, that then it leads to foundation problems. Well, and things, so. you hope you don't have a foundation problem. Of In one case that I know of, it's on the backside of the yard, but there's now a hole. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll walk back there and you now have, honestly, a sinkhole in your backyard where the water from your yard is draining off and going down through your yard, through the hole, into the concrete drain. Yeah. Or water's backing up from the concrete drain and is undermining your yard. Yeah. So, welcome to a lot of water motion. It's it's rough, man. So, but uh, it's just something to think about, and I feel like you just got to be a conscientious neighbor because you you know, like I said, it affects everybody around you, especially if you're uphill from somebody. You should, well, you know. if somebody decides to put in a lot of raised gardens, well, mm-hmm. that changes how the water moves around the yard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I've run into issues where they want me to uh, build a deck. And uh, one one in particular, I, I hate to say it, I had to talk myself, um, I, I didn't. I had to talk them out of basically a job for me. They wanted to pour a concrete foundation and have me build a patio cover. And I said, I think this design is going to be problematic. And I said, I really don't know if I want to be a part of that. Because they were talking about a pretty serious a pretty serious slab of concrete, and I right. really don't know what happened to that job. <laughs> I just said, I, I, maybe you better get a different team involved in this. But it's like, I just couldn't do it in good conscience. I'm like, this is going to, this might even flood your house. Well, if you that's do it. So a big like, thing where sometimes you need an architect right. to look at your yard before you do what may be a landscaping job. Mm-hmm. Because one thing I've run into commercial buildings all the time is the building being flooded because it has either too little mulch or too much mulch. Right, yeah. And they're forcing the water back into the building instead of letting the water drain away. Yeah. Well, I don't want to run out of time before I throw this at you, Alan. So this home, um, uh, I'm not naming names, of course, but uh, this, this uh, she found a really good uh, landscape 
team that's going to help her with mm-hmm. this. This thing's going to cost, it's a $40,000 drainage system. The side of yeah. the house has now got, they had to dig everything out. They put layers of felt and gravel and drainage, uh, you know, tubes and everything. Yes. But that's a maintenance thing, too. You can't just put those in and forget about them, right? I mean, Not now with you're. clay soil. No, now, so it's a continual maintenance thing. But I'm yes. hoping this gives her some, uh. Because it's it's a lot of work. They're having to rebuild yep. where it's eroded back there. They're digging up the whole yard. And honestly, a lot of this probably could have been avoided. It's kind of, you know, it's uh, disappointing. Just be, you know, if you're building out there, think of everybody around you, please, people. And, and think, well, think about yourself, too, because you've yeah. got to have a really critical eye and look at it and go, you know, if it looks like water might go there. Water probably will. Yeah, it's going to get everywhere it wants to out here. So, well, uh, we, you know, what a very interesting show. You know, a lot of, lot of interesting topics, and I feel like all of them, there's going to be follow-up. Who knows what I'm going to get uh, next week out of it because I'm still on the same job, Alan. I'm going to be there for a while, so uh, I might have more uh, – drama and material i may have to swing by this week yeah you should actually you should drop by this one this is interesting because this is also in that neighborhood where they were taking down that hundred foot tree there's been a lot of action around here usually jobs aren't this exciting but um you know they're gonna be this year yeah absolutely well folks we we really appreciate you tuning in to a tool talk radio here on news talk 98.9 the roar of memphis a lot of fun today thanks a lot natalia and uh, keep us posted on all the action Mm -hmm. going on with your barn dominium but it's time to get out of here. So on behalf of my friends, uh, Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max behind the glass, I'm Joe Thorderson. Thanks for listening to Tool Talk Radio, and we'll see you next week.